Actually, actually, I'm not going to talk about that. Um, though, though, I would be happy to during during break. That that's a pretty. I, I forgot which title I sent you. So, um, uh, please no more theology. No, 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 no more. Um, yeah, just just let me flag that that question that was advertised falsely, as it turns out, um, is actually critical to this um, uh, project uh, that I'm doing. Because, of course, if logic is FDE, you don't have excluded middle, and so you lose some of the strongest arguments for uh, gluts. Um, I, in fact, think that there are interesting arguments for gluts without FDE. Um, and I've waved at the beginnings of those arguments in a paper called There Is No Logical Negation. Um, but I'm not going to talk about that today. We can talk about it in discussion if you want. Instead, as I was saying to Thomas yesterday, um, I, I was trying to reflect on themes of yesterday's talks. And in each one of them, the theme of recapture came up. Um, and I thought it might be useful for me to say how I think of that um, and give an illustration of how I think that that can be sort of implemented and, and answered. Okay? So, uh, as I've been saying in the other talks, um, I, I really there are lots of different senses of logic and so on and so on. But I think that, uh, you know, one of, one of the critical ones, uh, certainly in the philosophy of logic and, the, and in debates about which approach to paradox, which theory of truth and so on is right, I think that a key idea is logic as universal closure operator, sort of the basement level. And then for all of your theories, you build on top of that. You extend uh, that closure operator. Oh, OK. Um, sorry, I was hearing all that, and I wasn't sure whether there was feedback or what was going on. OK, <laughs> got it. That's outside. All right. So I, I will think of logic. When I talk about logic here, that's what I'm talking about, OK? That, that, that basement level, universal uh, closure operator, uh, which is, you can think of it as an entailment relation that looks only at the logical vocabulary. What's that? That's the standard first order vocabulary without identity. When I say it's standard, I obviously don't mean it's standardly treated as per standard classical logic, but that there are connectives of those ARTs and they sort of do this and that. Okay. So that's logic, uh, and I believe that um, the, the, the best account of logic is uh, uh, so understood is FDE. Um, and I especially think that if you're to go subclassical logic, so if you think that logic the right account of logic is subclassical, then I really think you should think it's FDE, okay? Um, but uh, we can talk about that too, all right? Uh, I'm not going to say more on that here. In, what's important to note is that in FDE, uh, you don't have... Um, uh, so if this is logic, you know, uh, you don't have detachment in that form. So arbitrary B, I don't know why I said alphas and betas. Maybe that's the last talk you used that and it's just on my mind. But anyway, um, you're not going to get material detachment in FDE. Moreover, you're not going to get... Um, uh, um, uh, identity for, um, the material conditional. Yeah. Okay. Now, 
this well-known weakness, uh, you know, in, in LP, another famous subclassical, you don't get this, but you get this. In K3, you get, sorry. In LP, you get this, but not this. K3, you get this, but not this. In FDE, you don't get either, okay? So on the surface, it looks like um, FDE is even worse than, than LP K3. Um, I don't think that's right. Um, and one reason I don't think that's right is that if you're going subclassical, uh, resources that you have to appeal to to overcome this apparent defect, um, those resources you have to have whether you're going LP, K3, or FD. So I think FD gets favored by considerations that I mentioned in another talk of symmetry and, and beauty and all that. Yes, it's weaker, but it's more attractive. And on top of that, the resources you have to take in the stronger subclassical logics are already they do all the work for FDE too. So, okay. Once, uh, thanks, Thomas. Uh, once you have uh, this weakness, that's where the question of recapture comes up. Okay. There are lots of different things that people have meant by recapture, and we've seen that throughout some of these different times. Uh, Eduardo's talk gives you a sort of very interesting uh, sense of recapture. Dave's got some, um, uh, as did other talks yesterday. Um, I think of recapture in a very sort of simple way, compatible with the way I'm thinking of logic. And that is, you don't have, you don't have detachment, you don't have identity, and of course there are other things you don't have in the closure operator. Question, how uh, or why then do we seem to have many true theories that appear to be closed under classical logic? Um, so the first question is sort of why do we have that appearance? Um, the second question is how do we have those? How do we have those true theories that are in effect closed under classical logic? Okay. That is, they have material conditional that in the theory detaches. Okay. So this is the question that I take to be at issue in recapture. It's a, it's a why and how so many theories appear to be classically closed. Can you maybe say a little bit more about how the how question differs from the why question? Uh, maybe it doesn't differ a whole lot. Uh, it's possible that it doesn't. Maybe answering the why uh, gives you an answer to the how. Um, I guess I, I asked both just, I thought that... Yeah, they may, uh, they may, they may collapse. Um, I actually, on the, on the response I give, I think they do collapse. But it just seemed to me on the surface, they seem like independent questions. Um, Ah, here's one way they might be very independent. The why question might be, why do we think that they're like, why do we think that there are so many um, true theories closed under classical logic? Uh, yeah, maybe they don't come apart. I was thinking that there might be. So let, let's just let's just take the the question of. Um, recapture just to be the how question. If you wanted just the why question, let me just take the how. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. Good. Thanks. It's, it's, it's useful. Um, okay. So that's what that's what we'll be thinking of when we think about recapture. Now, by a really famous example. I want to concentrate on um, material restricted quantification. By that, I mean um, sentences like always are Bs 
where this is naturally uh, represented as um, uh, all A's or B's like this, uh, just using the material conditional, and uh, where that hook, uh, of course, as in FDE, just winds up being defined in terms of the logical uh, negation and disjunction, okay? So, um, we have many true theories that uh, are such that these material restrict quantification claims detach. The recapture question is how, how do they detach? Okay. Now I'm thinking why I had Y in there. There's something about the, the answer that points to extra linguistic stuff uh, tags along to that. Let me, ah, uh, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Okay, so let me, let me back up slightly, okay? By my light, I don't think that there's any conditional that is in all theories uh, that detaches across all theories. Uh, the only candidate for that would be some, some of the logical vocabulary, and there is no such thing. I don't think that this is a problem. I think it's actually a virtue, and in particular, it's a virtue that glut theorists have, have pointed to for a long time, and that is that if we have um, uh, both of those in our theory, but A is a glut, um, given the nature of, of this thing, you'd wind up with all sorts of problems if this detached across the board. Um, now, you might then ask why, why we so strongly believe that there is detachment or something like this. That's where this extra linguistic stuff comes in. But because of today's schedule and we've all been pushed around, uh, I'd rather jump over that briefly for now. Okay, I mean, I talk a lot about that stuff in other papers, and in particular, um, free of detachment, uh, I talk a lot about that. What I'd like to turn to, which is, I think, more relevant, is the extra logical stuff, okay? This fix, uh, fits the picture that I've been pushing. Namely, um, you've got uh, logic, that's the foundational closure operator in all of our true theories, and um, our work as theoreticians is to build on top of that, okay? Um, and I think it's in that step, building on top of that, where you get detachment for this stuff, okay? So let me, let me focus just on detachment but I'll point out the uh, duel as we go. Um, so, uh, shrieking a predicate um, uh, G. So, I will say that we shriek a predicate G, so G is some predicate, let's just focus on the simplest case, just a unary predicate, okay? Uh, it generalizes to any area, but um, we have a simple unary predicate G uh, in the language of our theory. We as theorists uh, know that as far as logic is concerned, G could be glutty, right? The logic doesn't roll that out, G could be gappy, let us think, though, that when in the phenomenon in question, the theory we are giving is one where G is um, 
The gluttiness of D is theoretically impossible. Okay? Then when you are doing the work of constructing your theory-specific consequence relation on top of logic, you are going to uh, shriek the predicate G um, by saying, uh, let me just use an arbitrary uh, thing. So that from the mere existence of a glut, you get triviality, okay? Now, don't think of this at the moment proof theoretically, okay? The way I'm thinking of it is when you are giving a theory, what you're doing is you're taking this, this tremendous space of logical possibilities um, and you're narrowing them down to the ones that are possibilities for your theory. They're theoretically possible. And when I think about shrieking a predicate G, we impose this condition on the space of possibilities, space of models, to be, to be precise. And in particular, uh, we only look at those models that satisfy this condition. That is, you've got a glut with respect to G just in the trivial model, okay? Um, okay. Uh, I'll mention it now, but I won't focus on it unless, for whatever reason, people are interested. Um, the uh, sort of dual, not strict dual is the way I'm writing it, but um, is, uh, is shrugging a predicate. So this is called shrieking, this is called shrugging. Um, uh, shrieking is sort of like, ah, a contradiction. Shrugging is like, oh, okay, gee, it either is or isn't, you know, so you sort of shrug. Um, so you impose this condition. And the only uh, models of your theory are ones that are going to obey this condition with respect to the predicate G. Okay? So, we're trying to explain how so many of our theories appear to be classically closed. I'm skipping this. Uh, and we're talking about extra logical detachment. This is what all of us do when we give a theory. We not only try to get the simple truths about the theory, but we also have to specify a consequence relation for the theory to tell us what follows according to theory from what. In doing so, you're always building on top of logic. Logic just doesn't give you enough consequences. Um, one way of getting detachment for a restricted, uh, for material restricted quantification is by way of shrieking, okay? In particular, if you shriek every predicate of your language, the language of your theory, uh, you can show that you will have uh, um, detachment for the material conditional in that theory, and hence you'll have it for the material restricted quantifications. Okay? Is it that, uh, this pretty clear? Yeah? That is if you shriek every predicate of the, of the language. Okay? Um, similarly, if you wanted identity or, or the virtues of uh, then you shrug all of them. Um, uh, more restrictedly, if you've got some uh, material conditional restricted quantification claim, as long as everything in the antecedent is shrieked, you'll get detachment according to the theory. Okay? So maybe not everything in the language is shrieked, but everything in the antecedent is. All right. This is an important question to think about. All right. So I take it, I, I know we're all sort of 
we were expecting lunch and instead we're getting this. But um, uh, so I'm trying to hurry without being unintelligible. But here's, a, here's an important question to think about. Um, so I certainly think that we have uh, transparent truth available in, in uh, um, certainly it's not logically ruled out, okay? Um, and I think that transparent truth does give rise to gluts like the liar. I'm not transparently true, okay? Um, I want to point out that if you've got transparent truth floating around here in the antecedent, you're not going to be able to detach by way of shrieking uh, all the predicates. Um, in particular, you're not going to shriek truth. But here's the question I want you to think about. Is that a problem? I mean, on one hand, it's not going to explain how you get uh, detachment for all instances of uh, restricted material um, quantification. But of course, you don't think you do. And moreover, you don't think you should. Because you know that would be problematic. What you're trying to explain is how we um, have true theories that appear to be um, closed under classical logic. If they are, in effect, if the whole language is, then you don't have transparent truth floating around in there. Um, that's one, one uh, thought. If you do have transparent truth floating around in there, then it's not going to be unrestrictedly closed under classical logic. Um, and the thing I want you to think about is why would you think that that should be demanded or even desired? You, you wouldn't. Okay. Um, okay, so shrieking. This, I think, is one of the main answers to how uh, um, many of our true theories uh, appear to be closed under classical logic, including like arithmetic and all these things. Um, uh, but let me raise some particular uh, um, some particular uh, examples that raise issues. The question you might ask is, um, how far does shrieking go? <clears throat> so, if you're a transparent truth theorist, you'll often say, when people say, why do you have the transparent truth predicate at all, one thing you'll point to is work it does in various generalizations, however that's to be understood. Um, uh, including um, everything that Lavinia said yesterday is true, okay? Think about that. So everything uh, Lavinia said is uh, true. Well, that's transparent, okay? I'm going to point out that as long as Lavinia said is shrieked. As long as you have no reason to think that, in, according to your, your, the true theory, Lavinia saying is a glutty, uh, that's a, it's theoretically possible that um, that's a glut. But Lavinia both said and didn't say. Then you're going to shriek this, and you'll, you'll, you'll have no problem detaching, as we've already said. Okay? So, um, this sort of direction and the sort of usual uh, generalizations that deflation is pointing to is not going to be a problem. Okay? Here's a more interesting case. And uh, our tree uh, field, when we were talking about this um, a while back, came up with um, his example was funnier, but I'm just going to give you a simple one. Um, so, uh, uh, 
Um, so every true thing that Lavinia said yesterday uh, um, is uh, uh, wonderful, you know, okay? Now, um, this is transparent truth. Um, you're gonna you're gonna shriek this, but you're not gonna shriek that. You shriek that, and that you you gluts are gonna be the same problem they were for the classical logic person, right? Okay. This looks like it's a problem. Um, I think it isn't. Well, it is. <laughs> um, <laughs> So the being a problem, your best theory should acknowledge the possibility of bloodiness there. Um, no, it, it definitely is a problem uh, for this strategy that says, yeah, no detachment, but we get theory-specific detachment by shrieking and so on. Um, the reason this is a particularly strong problem is that the utility of the transparent truth predicate that I and many other you know, deflationary people about truth say comes in these kind of generalizations, okay? And, and the utility is supposed to be that you wind up getting this kind of stuff out of using truth back here, all right? Um, does it, so shrieking won't help, that's clear, right? Um, because shriek that the liar is the usual problem. All right, let's walk through though what we do get. Okay, let's just step through this. Um, and I'll probably I, I'm going to end with after we do this, I'm going to point to one other thing, and then we'll wrap it up and go to discussion. Um, yes, you you can't detach sort of unrestrictedly here, because you're not shrieking this. But notice that if this points to something that's shrieked, points to and only to something that's shrieked, then assuming we were shrieking this, let's assume we are. Let's, let's assume the only thing we're not shrieking is truth, okay, in the theory. If this points to something that's shrieked, completely shrieked, every, every uh, predicate in the sentence to which this refers is shrieked, then you do get detachment. Here's a, here's a different way to see this. Transparent truth is really just tells you, um, you know, you can substitute true A for A anywhere and untransferred. <coughs> The paradoxes arise because you can't use, uh, you, you can't sort of eliminate truth by way of the transparency rule. You, you always wind up, truth is always back there. This is just common circularity that everyone points to, right? But if we say like, uh, if we're saying, you know, uh, um, Axel is typing and that's true, well, that's equivalent to Axel is typing. And if all that's streaked, typing and so on, there's no problem. This will detach. Okay? So as long as you can unravel the predications of transparent truth down to a truth-free sentence, condition one, and two, every predicate in that truth-free sentence is streaked, this detaches, okay? So I just want to point out that these common generalizations that are important to sort of the philosophical story about the importance of transparent truth, this alone, uh, truth in the antecedent, in these common generalizations, isn't immediately problematic. Because as long as the instances of this are the sort of thing that you know you're treating consistently by shrieking you're going to get detachment 
And the ones that aren't, the ones that according to your theory could be gluts, why would you, why did you, you don't expect attachment, you don't want attachment. Um, and when you're talking about, but we, this is closed under classical logic or something, you're not talking about a theory that has this uh, involved. If it truly is unrestrictedly uh, detaching. So we're looking at cases where the most part just detaches, keeps going, but there are cases where it stops short. And those are the cases you would expect. Those are the very cases that make these subclassical responses to paradox attractive. Um, it's like, yeah, well, you don't get absurdity because it doesn't detach. All right. Um, so what have I said here? First, how do we um, explain the uh, ubiquity of true, uh, apparently classically closed theories? I'm pointing to shrieking, theory-specific shrieking. What though happens in the target truth generalizations? Well, you don't really have a problem here, unless, you know, assuming you're shrieking all this. You also don't have a problem here, because you get all the detachment you would expect and want in the theory. Uh, the only detachment you don't is when uh, the theory acknowledges that this could be glutty. Okay. That, that to me, is a, is a huge part of the story. In fact, that's almost the end of the story. But now I want to point to one other thing. Um, when, when Dave and I were in uh, Australia at a conference, and Graham uh, was there as well, um, he was pointing out that, no, you want detachment across the board. Um, uh, and so my response to that is, um, then you're not talking about transparent truth. When you say, in a way that you demand detachment from this, that all the true things that Lavinia said are wonderful. Um, and you say, this has to detach. It seems to me the explanation has to point to, you're not, you, you, you're pointing to some stronger notion of truth that figures into this. That somehow ensuring that if she said something true, we get this following. Okay? So Graham's explanation, the expla explanation of many, including a, a, a time slice of myself, would point to different conditionals um, that are really at play here. For me, uh, the explanation is you've got a sort of just a different sort of truth that must be going on if you're demanding detachment here. In particular, uh, you have simple like uh, Tarski um, truth predicates, like it's going to be true, oh sorry, that's, um, so define uh, true x just to be, um, or truth uh, to be true x and x is in, you know, some fragment of the language of the theory. Two things to know. If this being in such and so fragment, together with such and so fragment, are fully shrieked, will deliver because um, it has the effect of shrieking. Okay? <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm nearing the end here. Um, <laughs> so if you demand, so I think the utility of truth comes into play, it's not going to detach uh, across the board in particular, it will detach for all the shrieked business you're referring to, but of course, 
if the theory recognizes the possibility of gluts, it's not going to detach here, but why would you think it should? Then somebody responds, we must have some way of absolutely detaching, consider in particular the claim that all of uh, Lavinia's true claims are wonderful. And this is supposed to carry the sense that it must detach. I say then, the notion of truth you're talking about must be something stronger than transparent truth. That stronger notion of truth is going to be, um, is going to be shrieked <laughs> itself. And then we're back to just getting detachment. All right. Um, that response is fine as far as it goes. Uh, Graham then replied in turn and just said, yeah, but what about a claim like um, if there are true contradictions, or all true contradictions are interesting? <laughs> um, uh, so, you know, uh, I mean, I, I don't know. Uh, so, um, You know, uh, that's true, and it's uh, a contradiction, and uh, then it's interesting. Um, you can see that shrieking is not going to do the work here, uh, at least on the, on the surface. My response to this is the same response as it was at the beginning. I think if you're really just talking about transparently true contradictions, you shouldn't expect this to detach. This might be true as far as it goes, fine, but it's not going to detach. If there's some theoretical demand that it detaches, that's where I think you have a notion of contradiction or glut that is Tarski-like. So, Here's where the utility of uh, Tarski's ideas, well, I, I keep saying Tarski, it doesn't have to be exactly that, but these are going to be restricted notions, unlike uh, transparent truth. And here, you're just going to have a notion of bloodiness that is going to be restricted to a certain fragment, and is such that you, you can shriek it. Obviously, Defining glut as, um, you know, uh, X is true and X is not true is not going to, you're not going to shriek that, where that's transparent. Moreover, defining glut as X is true and not true is going to be pointless because the truth predicates are going to be shrieked and so on. Oh, uh, maybe you need to take that inside on the street. I don't know. Okay, so I, I'm going to wrap this up, um, but let me review what we've talked about, okay? On this conception of logic, um, we're thinking of logic as the basement, the foundational closer operator for all your true theories. We're thinking of logic as FDE. Uh, as we all know, FDE is very weak um, in the sense that um, it does not detach, no identity, and so on. I mean, with respect to the connectives, logical connectives. Um, this weakness is a virtue. I mean, it allows us to have, to, to accommodate a lot of different phenomena in our theories. Logic isn't going to rule out, you know, Glotty phenomena, gappy phenomena, and so on. On the other hand, it appears that we have many true classically closed theories. That's the question of recapture. How do we get these theories if logic is so weak? I pointed to um, uh, material restricted quantification. Um, and tried to show how, in various theories, the material conditional winds up detaching. 
Um, and when it comes to, and, and the answer is shrieking, but when it comes to the predicates that your theory recognizes are potentially bloody, like transparent truth, you can't shriek it. So what happens there? Well, you have to look carefully. If the theory demands detachment come up may, you're probably using not transparent truth, but some Tarskian-like notion uh, within the theory. As uh, subclassical theorists have said all along, the great thing about subclassical logic, as long as you stay in subclassical land, is that you can do everything the classical theorists can do, including whatever the, um, the Tarskians do. Of course, once you start adding all this other stuff, it gets more complicated. But at least with respect to logical stuff, you can always type. Okay, so sorry. I mean, we're supposed to be eating lunch now, but let's let's uh, close there, and we can talk now or on the way to lunch or whatever you want. I don't, I don't care. But that okay. There you go. Done. I'll try to remember that. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, okay, so so I want to focus in on transparent truth and the antecedent of the condition, right? So it's not about this truth stuff. Yep. But it is about the the getting in the antecedent. Yep. Uh, let me just get one on the board for us, okay? Just erase the S and the one that was there. Wow. Oops. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, sorry. Okay. Let me just so that we can focus. All right. So, okay. So, this is, um, unfortunately, this is going to be a bit inchoate. Um, okay. Do you want the conjunction back here? I don't care. Okay. Uh, the interesting thing is, is the truth there. Okay. Um, so you're so you push this a bit in a kind of dilemma UA. You said, look, I'll give you this much detachment. That is, if we ground in shrieked things. And let's pretend that everything but truth is shrieked. Okay. Right? okay. Right? Easy. So we yeah. say, okay, look, if it's grounded, we have detachment already. I don't need to say anything about that. Yep. If it's ungrounded, you shouldn't want detachment. Right. Uh, right. And this is, and it's the second thing here that I want to worry about a bit. And you seem to think the only way you could be asking for some detachment for anything ungrounded is if you were asking for full detachment for everything ungrounded. Right, because you went straight to objections to full detachment. Can you just repeat what you just said? I think, so I take the second part here where, yep, where it's no most grounded. No, yeah, oh, that's right. I'm saying, well, you shouldn't want detachment. That's right. That's right. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you actually consider responding to why people might want detachment there, every case you said, look, they're wanting, they're asking for full detachment. They're asking for detachment for every instance. Okay. But you're, in fact, committed to detachment for no instance. And it looks like there's a lot of ground there. And so in particular, I mean, one of the things that first drew me to ST kind of stuff is that the restrictions that you need on caught are not vocabulary specific. You can cut on all kinds of sentences involving the truth predicate, so long as you haven't established the sequence involving them by particular field of transparency. And I think, although I don't understand the details, that something like this is a foot among the true and wonderful things that Lavinia said yesterday. Yeah, right, that again, there are manipulations that you can do with sentences involving the truth predicate that you can't do with every sentence involving the truth predicate because it would blow up, but you didn't get enough. Whereas you seem to be doing, right, because your framework can only handle vocabulary specific or predicate specific restrictions, you have no way to allow for this kind of thing. And so it seems like there's a potential for a position that says, no, no, I'm, I'm asking for this much detachment, I don't know how much, but like suppose it's safe, right? This much safe detachment that won't blow up the, you know, can both blow up in your face, but involves detachment on the ground in cases. It looks like that's a position that you didn't offer any response to, but that someone adopting that position should reject the kind of story you're, you're selling because it's too weak. Yeah, yeah, good, good, good. Um, yeah, so you have it, you have it right. Uh, so the picture I'm painting is fully structural. We don't have to. Um, uh, uh, just standard FD, um, um, and 
how do we make sense of these uh, questions in that context? For me, I'm pushing the line that detachment is always uh, theory specific. It's going to come by way of vocabulary specific detachment. Um, I agree. You look at the whole rainbow of of options and options like yours and any no, 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 no
So for me, the truth teller is as much a problem as the liar, um, as far as detachment goes. It's potentially glutty. Um, I mean, it's me, you not all, all, all me, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, you don't, I mean, this just looks to me like a leap from some to all, right? It's saying, like, look, if there's any sentence that is potentially glutty involving this predicate, um, then we must read, oh. Can we sure. get back to that afterwards? So can we get to the back to this? No, I feel bad. Um, <laughs> Sorry. See, um, so I think actually my guess is something kind of similar to you, but right, when you were talking about not being able to uniformly detach, yeah. uh, you had a sort of slogan that, well, look, you can detach in all of these cases, yes. and you can't detach in the ones that you expect. So, 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 so you time. cannot detach in just those cases that you would expect. Ah, where truth is not eliminable. Okay. So I, 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 I look. I ran through this. I didn't have time to clean it up over lunch period. So okay. Yeah. So but, but the, the use of the language, I can't expect. It sort of suggests to me some sort of kind of like decidability or something mm -hmm. that I, I expected. I can calculate what I expect in a sense, and it, it does strike me that if I'm in a theory, and I know that some things are good for a detachment and some things are not, but I should know what to stay away from. That should in some way be sort of scrutable to me. But I'm not, I'm not sure that that is that in fact the case. That I could, there's a decision procedure in every theory to detide, decide when I can detach and when I can't. So I was just wondering if that was in fact the case, and if it is in fact the case, whether that's a problem for using material conditionals in theories. Yeah. So I wasn't thinking along those lines, um, uh, though I'm sure I probably spoke so sloppily that it sounded that way, but. What I meant was, and this came out a little bit in response to Dave, um, the mark for this simple case where all we shriek is, or we shriek everything but truth, the mark here is um, eliminability of the truth predicate from the denotation. Um, whether that's always going to be you know, decidable in some precise sense, um, certainly, if, if the decidability is not just some formal, uh, but somehow epistemic or something, I, I have no, no idea. Um, uh, but you're right, it is related to Dave's, um, because the reason this won't detach on the truth teller is that truth predicate isn't eliminable there. Um, uh, I mean, look, basically the idea, what, what I meant to say is you have, you have transferring truth attaching to X. X points to something where truth disappears. You're left with a fully shrieked language. So, of course, detachment goes through. Now, you're left with an X where truth doesn't disappear. One view is, hey, just because truth doesn't disappear, that doesn't mean it's a glut. That's the view that Dave was pushing, and it's a view that a lot of people sort of feel and believe. The view that I hold is that um, uh, the failure to shriek the predicate is is a, is acknowledging the theoretical possibility of that thing being a glut. Even if you feel so, the talk that I've engaged in, the many others in this, this sort of, um, hey, we sort of get detachment. They use the word safe at one point. Many of us talk that way, but but I'm actually um, thinking safety is on or off. Safe shriek, untreated, not safe. If you want to draw distinctions within the unsafe stuff, that's more work to do. And I do take the I do take the invitation to sort of think about options for that work. But as far as the view goes, uh, the truth teller remains as problematic. And I don't think this is summed at all. Um, We're, we're considering a very simplified theory here, 
and the simplest approach to it. In constructing that theory, you're right. You're right that this on-off thing is a sort of, you can, I guess, see it as, hey, we know there's some, so we'll go all. I see where you're coming from. On this approach, it's, okay. Ah, I finally get your question, sorry. Uh, agreed. There should be some mechanism, uh, I'm not, not that there should, I will, I will be interested in thinking about a mechanism within this approach that could allow for another way of getting detachment within a non-shrieked predicate. That is going to be interesting work. Um, okay. Thomas, <laughs> 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 have I answered your questions? Would it be okay if I very quickly was honest? <laughs> Try to sharpen it. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thanks. Okay. So I'm a, I am a theorist. Yes. I'm a theoretician. You writer. are. Yeah. You I have are. an axiom, <laughs> and I, part of my theory is that everything that satisfies this unary formula phi yes. satisfies your form, or unary formula C. Okay. Okay. I want, as a theorist, to be able to detach, or at least know when to detach. I'm not sure, right, that given C, uh, that it's clear if I can tell if it's decidable whether or not truth is eliminable in C, or in P. Okay. And therefore, I don't know that that axiom is going to do me any good if I can't tell whether I can apply it. Now, if it's decidable, if I take a fee and a theory and I say, well, look, I can tell whether or not truth is eliminable in this formula, and I have a decision procedure, then that makes some sense to me. <laughs> but if I can't tell when I can apply the axioms of my theory or not, if that's undecidable, then it sort of strikes me as contrary to the purpose of having a theory. Ah, and good. Um, and here's my response. <laughs> what you're describing is actually sort of the process of theory construction. So you're not, you're not at the theory yet. And exactly, so you're not in position to, to know whether this is really part of the, 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 the true theory. Um, and I have nothing uh, interesting to say about how we manage to come up with good theories and so on. Um, but I would just say you're not, yeah. Yeah, um, but I see that. Uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks. Uh, what about uh, the case of creepy uh, of Nixon and this type of stuff? In these cases, uh, the glut of the paradoxicality is not uh, as a consequence of something that you could. Uh, point out clearly is an empirical stuff, or is you are in a bad situation or something like that. And I believe that is relatively easy to construct some sentence. It's sort of like, um, uh, everything Nixon said, uh, is true, and everything, uh, whatever, uh, said is um, something like that. I remember that in the example, we used the, the most of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then we have a case where, uh, oh, no, these are actually, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, so this is, oh, yeah, sorry. Um, so A and, uh, and B, and this is B, and this is A. Um, right, and, 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 Ah, yeah, well, good news. Um, um, no, never mind. Um, <laughs> so you shrieked, uh, said, yeah, so we're getting the detachment. Um, so your theory recognizes a, a glut here. But not always, sometimes, because it's the band of the information. Right, uh, but, 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 but right, I'm not saying that every time you've got a sentence, these, this pair of sentences, you're getting uh, a glut. I'm saying if the additional information is you've got this attached to that and this attached to that, your theory is committed to a glut. Yeah. Um, 
Good. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Um, so I'm um, I just had a short comment on what they were saying, and then I wasn't. So, actually, you do get some instances of a valid attachment, really. Because if B is true and you approve it, you don't get it. Ah, uh, if P is true and yeah, yeah. B is true. Like, for instance, if B is the yeah, truth teller, yeah, yeah. then you get the attachment. If you can prove the truth teller. Or if B is all tautologies are true, or stuff, something like that. A true tautology or something, then you'll get the attachment. If it's true according to the theory, then yeah, you back it. So yeah, 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 yeah. right, good. Um, well, so I'm, I'm just not sure what, what you're trying to say because what, what I know it was that you were like, well, I mean, we don't have detachment, uh, but um, well, look, we kind of don't need it, right? Because uh, the instances in, which, in the cases in which we need it are like not the usual ones and. Also, why would you expect that? So let me just, not to interrupt, but just because I know I haven't been clear. Partly I'm thinking about getting something to eat. And, uh, but, but <laughs> I know. So just remember, every question you ask. Uh, <laughs> um, so so but, uh, here's what I meant to say before you, and we'll see whether the rest of your question applies. Um, what I meant to say is, we don't have detachment. We don't have a, a detachable conditional uh, that's sort of across all true theories. Um, okay, recapture question. How then do we have uh, true theories that appear to be closed on the classical logic? I point to shrieking. That does answer the question because there are some that just don't, may not have the truth, uh, transparent truth predicate explicitly in there or something. Then that will fully answer the question. But the more interesting question is when you've got transparency in there. I tried to say um, you only have the appearance then of being closed entirely under classical logic, but here's why that appearance is so strong, because you shriek so much that you get detachment for so much, and where you don't, it's not that it doesn't matter, it's that That's exactly why you're advocating the theory you have, because you're, you're recognizing these cases that combined with detachment uh, would give rise to a horrible theory. I, I understand that. Okay. Things. But uh, so then I just have three, two examples that, that might be uh, a little bit more controversial. And one is the definition of knowledge. Okay. Like, um, I know that X is only. I'm justified to believe that X and X is true. Of course, yeah, there are other examples. But let's you know, I'm an epistemologist, I believe that. If I'm justified to believe X, yeah. Yeah, so suppose this is in your theory, yeah, and this is the material, yeah. And X is true, right? Uh, but because I want, I want the truth to you to be. No, no. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah, 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 sorry. Uh, yeah. I forgot. Uh, I forgot what knowledge was. All right, there so you go. The truth breaking right there is allowing us to, to have. Um, a single definition is like schema, right? And that's why it's so cool. Um, however, let's say I, I accept your theory of truth, right? And I, I prove that the liar is true. So I'm justified in believing the liar, and the liar is true. So I want to say that I know the liar, but that doesn't detach, and I won't be able to get that. Okay, here's what I was hoping that people's stomachs would force us to close before I had to say this. Um, I'm sorry to report that my theory, not old me, where excluded middle was around all the time, but my theory proves the gladiness of the liar only in a cheap way. It's just put in there. It's not like it follows from, from the T-schema or something. Um, so it's in there. And because it's in the theory, the truth of the, the gladiness of the liar, um, it's going to follow that you know it too. I mean, at least if you got knowledge stuff going around. Because... How? Like you have rule form? Of <coughs> I mean, if it's not justified, then surely we don't have. 
So you add that you justify. <laughs> Yeah. How do I identify that I know? Um, Logical admissions or something. <laughs> so, okay. So I, I was actually wrong. I wasn't trying to be uh, funny on the null. I, I think I just slipped. Um, um, Okay, so, um, good, good problem. I, I think, I, I mean, my initial answer is this. Um, uh, the truth that you know some things is not always derived. Um, I, I agree, that's why I say it's a good problem. I'm not, I'm not in any way, um, no, let me be positive. I'm in every way optimistic that there's a more satisfying solution to your question. I don't have it now, um, but I like the I like the point. You wouldn't want to lose. You you wouldn't want all of the uh, these sort of natural philosophical things to sort of collapse because you're pushing. I I'm on board with that. Um, so that's why I love what you brought up here. This is tying it into other sort of apparent philosophical um, truths. So that's good. Yeah. But my short answer is that you that you know that the things of God is not a derived uh, truth. Um, for now, I want it to be, but I have to figure out how. Okay. Then, I'm, I'm sorry you said this before I arrived. Oh no 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 no. But uh, what is the relation between predicates and theories? Because it's it's not clear whether predicates are like. Whether predicates can exist in more than one theory, or whether they are specific to, to every theory, and because I think that is going to affect also the way you, you solve the problem, because the, that could also help you say, well, I mean, it's a little cheating, but you can say that if we um, if we define theories the right way, you're going to find that all predicates of every every predicate where it is theoretically possible there be a lot is going to be such that you don't want it to be the test for that theory, and that the ones that where it's the test are not to another theory, even if it's in the same predicate, right? But then you're kind of like moving all all the work from the logicians into the theoreticians, right? So the, the people who are doing it, the, which is a big part of you just uh, told uh, I forgot your name. Uh, Thomas, uh, Dave. Dave, I'm sorry. Dave yeah. Thomas. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. The Yeah. 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 more constrained about what uh, theories are, about how they're related to, to, to properties. You can just, at least at hoc, just move all your problems into True. theories. Yes. Yes. Good. 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 Um, I have come to this project um, uh, because I'm convinced that ultimately, if there's any real promise in in the subclassical solutions uh, and approaches to things, it's in a very simplified um, approach. All this stuff to get conditionals that they've been, and then dealing with contraction, dealing with this, dealing with that. Um, uh, by the way, I'm a, I am so happy that we've made all this progress. But for me, I think that the resources, once you go subclassical, the resources you need, stuff that I haven't talked about in terms of extra linguistic and all this stuff that goes into the picture, that stuff winds up doing the work in the end that a lot of this stuff, that this is, this is, my promise. I haven't shown you that I can meet the promise. But I would be very bothered if the picture I give, and this is why Lavinia's last question was good. I would be very, very bothered if I wind up having to have this terribly ad hoc thing. At the moment, I think that this is more natural, uh, simpler um, uh, a picture than before. Um, 
Now, my talk of theories is not supposed to be an ad hoc sort of way around a problem. It's rather supposed to be, look, that's really what we're doing. I, I am taking a particular stand on what counts as logic and what counts on lo as logical vocabulary. And then the rest of the story goes from there. When we're doing physics, we bring in certain predicates. When we're giving a theory of knowledge, we bring in certain predicates. When we're, you know, a theory of possibility, a theory of this, a theory of that. Um, uh, and to me, this is, this is not some sort of, this I was hoping is sort of a very natural, familiar way of, of thinking about what theories are in the process of theorizing. Um, you're focused on getting the right theory of this phenomenon. And the vocabulary that's peculiar to that, that's going to be in the language of the theory. Um, why should a theory of, uh, I mean, to me, you'd, you, you'd carry a prima facie burden of, um, of needing an argument to say that is metaphysically possible has to be a predicate in the language of arithmetic or the theory of arithmetic or something. I'm not saying it doesn't make sense or it's crazy. It's just that we wouldn't do that in a natural sort of theory of arithmetic. Um, and in that way, I'm kind of relying on, on a simplified picture of, of um, theories and their languages. One that I don't, I think is kind of familiar, um, but I'm trying to bring in some of the Tarskian insights with some of the subclassical insights. These two have never been incompatible, but they've never been brought together in a way that really makes, you know, a sort of unified uh, picture. And, and, and that's kind of what I'm doing now. Um, I'm not sure if I answered your question. Well, <laughs> no, no. Um, but, okay, suppose that you have, it's possible that you have two theories that use the same predicate. Two theories that use the same predicate, okay. Uh, that's, that's yeah, like predicate. truth. Yeah. Yeah, sure. And one of them, for one of them, it is, they, they have good reasons to believe that it is uh, theoretically possible that uh, that predicate gives them gloves. gloves. But the other, the other one doesn't. Then you can detach the, the sentences from this theory yeah, because it hasn't shown. That, that, that was my point. Ah, okay. Because that's ah, okay. the way to like, have getting some of these more. Good, 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 good. This might be related to Davis as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. And to, and to De Bomas. Uh, um, <laughs> Uh, it, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, it can, it's kind of like good. This is this is excellent. Um, so, according to me, um, and I may be the only person who believes this, uh, classical piano arithmetic is true. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, um, now, let's suppose we have a theory that adds transparency into that plus transparent truth. That should have no problem. That should have no problem. Yeah. On the other hand, uh, if, if we start, so that the reason I was pointing to these guys again is that you might get a little bit of the difference in terms of where you started, the domain of the theory. Um, I'm not saying this is without problem, but I, I'm glad you raised this because uh, I do see it now as tied into this. I, d I don't have a complete answer, um, but I like it. Uh, that's going to be that's going to have to be part of the story. Certainly going to be have to be part of uh, the answer to these guys. Um, good, thanks. Thank you. Okay, so I hope no one else has. <laughs> 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 no, they don't. <laughs>